G'day folks, as part of the ongoing inverter air conditioner saga that I'm routinely going through at the moment, we're going to have a look at this uh, Fujitsu. This is one of the recent model units that I picked up maybe four months ago or so. It's just been sitting out in the graveyard waiting for recovery. Refrigerant recovery that is, it's R410A. A little bit harder to get someone to uh, do it because people are still doing R22 at the moment. But I've had them recovered, I had quite a few recovered actually, there's a massive pile of them out there. And uh, I just thought we'd go through this one bit by bit because it's probably the latest, the newest unit I've got at the moment. Um, obviously blue lacquered coil, very clean, most of that dirt and corrosion is just from sitting outside for a while here. Like this thing was spotless when I got it. It's a uh, model AOT R24 LCL be able to see there anyway. Made in People's Republic of China. So it's not even a Malaysian or Taiwanese built one, it's a Chinese built Fujitsu. Uh, obviously R410A refrigerant rated at 7.4 kilowatts cooling and 8.5 heating. And uh, one thing I should have mentioned in my heat pump video, uh, why heat pumps don't like cold climates is that the inverter sort of solves part of that problem but it also rapes the compressor in the process by doing what it does. That's why they don't last very long. So it's not the best, what, best way to treat a compressor but it does make a lot of heat at very very low ambient temperatures. So that's probably the only advantage of an inverter is that they do create good heat at low ambient temperatures but in my opinion and the opinion of many people who work with them and use them they are short-lived and problematic. So you'll never see me actually promoting inverter units to actually buy. I'd never recommend anyone buy them. But I'm going to pull this thing apart. I've already had some screws out as you can see. This side cover has a bit of moisture proofing on there. There's a foam strip but there's really no proper gasket. There's a little strip at the top. And you can already see there's the mains input snubber capacitors. So again, it has the potential for moisture to get up into the inverter board and cause problems, as well as small critters, like spiders and other insects. I think I've still got a screw on the other side, but we'll pop that out and have a look. That's the inverter in there. Okay, well it's pretty easy to get the tops off these just one little snap lock and the cover just flips straight off. There's not a lot of uh, protection against moisture ingress although there's no obvious signs of it. I've, not, I've never actually seen a Fujitsu that suffered serious moisture damage to be honest. They must design the airflow circuit for these things a little bit better than Dakin. I've seen a lot of Dakins with corrosion problems on the boards so they're obviously a slightly better design in terms of keeping moisture out. Uh, first problem I noticed is the way these to tops of these caps are bulging a bit. I've never seen healthy Nichicon filter or snubber caps bulge like that. It's only slight, you won't be able to see it in the video because of the glare, but that's raised up and they wobble around on the board a bit, so that might be part of the problem. Uh, maybe the rectifier went short and started putting AC into it or something like that. I've got no way of powering it up. Even if I put mains onto it, I still need a serial communication signal from the indoor unit to tell it to turn on. Uh, you can't just put voltage through that serial wire and expect it to do anything. It's actually a serial comm signal. So it's pretty much screwed without the indoor unit. Um, I'll probably keep these boards for these caps and things. They're proper Rubicon. Uh, that's 25 volt, 220 mic. There's some 470s there. Second hand caps are okay in your own LCD monitor or something like that, they're just for messing around. Just don't put them in a customer's appliance. But these definitely look like they've gotten very hot. The plastic sheath has shrunk back like they usually do and the tops are starting to bulge, particularly that one. So that's probably half the problem with this. Fan motors are Panasonic, 380 volts DC. They're a BLDC motor again, just like the compressor with multiple speed wires or something like that. They usually have about six wires. And probably be that one there, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the fan motor. 
does it say it on it? Yeah, it does. DC fan. So that's the fan motor. It requires 380 volts DC to operate properly, and it would be a BLDC three phase type motor. So you can forget about using them as a normal fan motor at home without a drive board like this. Uh, but they do make good wind generators actually. I found that out the hard way. I had a severed motor and I was just spinning the fan up and touched the wires and got a nice little tingle from it. Like, definitely not harmful but it's putting out voltage. So I'll do that one day too. I'll use an uh, inverter air conditioner fan motor as a wind generator or just engine driven generator. See how many volts we can get out of it before it pops. Dakins have them too. Dakins have DC fan motors like that, same high voltage. So it could be a bit of fun. Well, let's get the rest of the casings and things off and start ripping this bitch apart. It's hogging up my table. Okay, we're slowly getting to, getting it to bits. Got the uh, inverters obviously out. The main compressor wiring harness. There's discharge temperature thermistor. Thing there that tells the inverter board or the control what temperature the discharge is at if it gets too high or too low. Um, there's an outdoor air sensor on the or thermistor on the back protector screen, and there should be one more that's down the bottom there. There's a coil temperature and de icing sensor. That one there is also for the reversing valve, sorry, not reversing valve, the expansion valve which is a stepping motor based needle valve. I've done a video on one of those before. Um, reversing valve, it's one of those cheap China ones like the rest of the unit. Very cheap and nasty these valves but they do work. Uh, I've got to peel the rest of this acoustic dampening material off and get to the compressor. It's so cold it's sweaty. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and get into that next. It's got two accumulators, steel muffler type things to trap liquid and let it evaporate before it gets back. That's full of desiccant or something that's probably a dryer. That's hollow. That's coming out of the discharge, so that's just a discharge muffler. Going up into the RV and then out. That's a suction line there. And liquid out from the expansion valve, that one there. I've done tons of videos explaining the cycle and other bits and pieces, so we're just going to pull this apart. And the inverter, pretty straightforward, that's the mains 240 side, well, AC input. Um, is there a rectifier on that? No. Rectifier is there. Okay, so it's a bridge rectifier there, that cable comes up from the board underneath. Those caps are part of DC side there, yeah. Hmm. There's not really a lot to them, it's just printed circuit crap. So that can live over there till I pull that board out for the spare caps and the rest can go in the bin. And we'll play with these fan motors another day too. I think I'll just strip the motor off and chuck the rest out. We don't really need the fan blade. Well, I should try a windmill one day. Well, the wind power is horribly ineffective. I'm not a big fan of it. Hydro power would be nice though, make a water wheel and stick it in a, in a local stream or river. Get some free hydroelectricity going. <laughs> as long as you don't dam it up, you'd prob probably be quite right to make a little uh, 12 volt power generator using hydroelectricity. I'd like to see someone use a smart drive motor for that. That'd be pretty cool. A couple of smart drives mounted on the floor of the uh, little miniature hydroelectric building, a couple of water wheels down the bottom spinning away, even a couple of old fan blades would probably do it. You get water flowing past those blades, they'll spin. Cool. Let's keep going. Okay, that's the plumbing out of it. Um, as it is, this sort of stuff doesn't go as clean copper. I don't know of any yards that would take it. I'm sure some yards might take it as dirty copper, but Generally speaking, you've got to cut out all the clean stuff, get rid of all this tar or rubber tape, anything steel like these accumulators, cut them off and throw them away. Cut the reversing valves and things out and just keep the copper bits, which are generally downgraded a bit because they have brazed joins which aren't copper or oil contamination. 
So refrigeration copper scrap is generally pretty low grade, but you get a varying degree of give and take at your local scrapyard. Some places don't mind, like they could hide something like that at the bottom of a, of a clean copper bin and they might pay you full price, but generally it's worth it to actually just cut out anything that's not copper and grade it accordingly. It's all to do with grading. The higher the grade is, the better. So all your brass valves can go in a brass bin. Reversing valves can go in a coast brass bin because they have steel in them. Um, my scrapyard won't even take them if they still have the coils on them because there's too much non-brass content. It's all to do with percentages. Too much non-copper or non-brass content and they'll downgrade the hell out of it. Um, if you want clean copper scrap then you've got to just get that sort of material. No brazes, no brass, no tape and no paint. So I'll do a full video on how to properly scrap and recycle a condensing unit and a whole package air conditioner like a window unit. And that includes separating motors and things too which are optional. Like fan motors I generally don't worry about. For a little thing like that at 60 cents a kilo I would not worry about separating that as scrap. It'll just go into steel, bulk steel pile. Compressors again are a different animal altogether. You've got to cut the tops and bottoms off and just pull the stators out. Otherwise they're worth shit. Hell, some yards won't even take them because they still contain oil. But that's another matter. I've already done tons of videos on how to scrap compressors and drain oil and pull stators out. So we'll pull this compressor off and we'll get rid of the rest of the coil. I want to do something with the compressor. That'll be another video though. We'll try and run this off a three phase VFD like a few people have asked me. And I have my expectations of it. I don't think it will work, but we can always find out. Oh, this compressor is made by Panasonic by the way. I'll show that label once I uh, get the coil out. The coil is a triple layer coil by the way. There's an add-on layer out here probably to make it a slightly larger model. And then there's the main two layer coil. You can see the outer layer is like an afterthought. It's only this long. It's just an auxiliary secondary layer. If it wasn't tied in so well you can always pull it off and use it as a separate heat exchanger for oil cooling or something. Cut it down lengthways and put it on a vehicle. And that can still be done. You can cut these loops out and just reroute it yourself and make a long strip type oil cooler. Tons of things you can do with old refrigeration coils, apart from selling them as scrap. I've got plenty of them floating around just for that sort of job as oil cooler, water cooler, um, you name it, auto trans cooler. They actually make really good automatic transmission coolers. Okay, well this is the uh, compressor out of it. It is a Matsushita aka Panasonic DC mini scroll made by Panasonic Corporation in Japan so it's not a bad compressor for a Chinese made unit to have. Um, same as that, that's one that I prepared earlier. They come in two forms, one's Matsushita with a flat top on it, the other one's Panasonic with the dome top but they both pretty much the same inside. When I get around to recovering and scrapping the LG twin compressor unit that I have, I'll show you the Matsushita version, which is mechanically the same, I believe. Um, yeah, lots of warnings on it. It's heavy, still small, it's not a huge compressor, and I will try and run it off a of VFD soon. So that's the end of that one. Um, actually, let's have another look at this inverter unit. Okay, well, the inverter is nicely in pieces. Let's have a bit of a closer look at them. Now this is the AC inside, this is where it starts. Obviously we have connectors which come off to somewhere. Uh, that would be power for this board here. That's the main logic board. Control, that sort of thing. A little switch mode power supply in there for supplying the microprocessor and other low voltage applications. And we have 240 coming out through these choke coils and capacitors and things. Obviously there's some MOVs and other surge arresters, varistors. Um, so that's alternating current going in there. Pull them off. We've got our AC in, 
it's going into the AC side of the bridge rectifier which is under there that screw holds the rectifier to the heatsink so we have DC coming straight out into this power module um, yeah that's all that's all it goes to is straight to that power module there's a little cap across positive to negative little blue thing um, I don't really know how these modules work so I can't explain that to you there's a DC choke coil or induct or probably an inductive ballast or something I think they're called a choke um, DC going out of this power module to the capacitors which are all 680 microfarad 450 volt Nichicons they look like they've heated up a fair bit judging by the bulging tops um, there's a control wire from the main control board that's key to everything that controls the inverter it controls the indoor unit it controls the air temperatures and other things outside or at least relies on signals from that so blue and yellow is coming back from the capacitors into there that's an IGBT brick in insulated gate bipolar transistor and you've got one two and three coming out for the compressor so I don't believe these turn back into alternating current they might they might not somebody said they do turn back into AC some people say they don't the compressor says DC on it so maybe it is three phase DC I believe these are a sensorless uh, BLDC drive so who knows somebody will be able to explain it to me and on the other side it's just a big heat sink and that's inside the uh, condenser cabinet so it gets airflow off the fan to cool it down plastic surround on it so yeah we'll pull this board off and just see what these modules are like the part numbers on them okay the power module is a PM601 BSG there's no brand name on it so not too sure on who actually made it on the ICs can't even tell yeah big 2 watt 12k resistor sorry 12 meg resistor uh, bridge rectifier is just a standard 25 amper in this pack you can actually see it from the top it's a PS21 sorry PS21265 dash AP and the second set of digits is 97 EKO so that's for all you gadget geeks out there who like to look up serial numbers I know a lot of people like to find out what these things are I'm actually quite interested so I'll probably run that number myself pretty sure it's an IGBT you've got gate and oh what's the other one uh, emitter leads on it and uh, yeah outputs gate collector emitter or something like that so that can stay there it's pretty much clean aluminum heatsink now <laughs> nice big one bloody long screws all that screw just to hold the bloody plastic plastic surround on it I didn't want this thing coming apart but yeah that's all there is to it and you know what we've got to do with these <laughs> we'll put them straight across 240 volts one day maybe next time I go to Brad's place these caps are definitely bulging a little bit more than they should be and they've gotten hot so I'd say part of this stuff's obviously toast maybe the rectifier's toast I'll test it before I ever use it but I'll probably desolder the rectifier and chuck the rest so that's about all folks little board there with a microprocessor FGL Japan um, yeah nothing too special that's all for now folks this one's toast stay tuned for a video on trying to run that off a of VFD along with some other DC motors I've got a hell of a lot to do tomorrow so I'm gonna pull all these apart except for the water tower I'm gonna use clean that up and use it the rest of it's all scrap